Hello everybody, my name is Annie. I run as Annie Got a Gun on RC Groups and I also am a part of the LA North American Hub Sign Service Technical Office and I'm here to show you how to upgrade your H501S. First off, let me explain to you what a full firmware upgrade entails. There are three main parts to firmware. The first you may have heard of as FC. It's also known as flight control and is the part of your drone internally that controls the flight patterns of the H501S. The second is RX or receiver. It is self-explanatory. It receives the commands that the transmitter gives it and transmits it as um, flight power on the drone. The third, also self-explanatory, is RC or remote control, also known as TX or transmitter. I don't think I need to explain that one, but basically it's the firmware for your transmitter and is best paired with your receiver. Um, so let's get started. Alrighty? So there are four things you actually need, well five, now that I say it, for your firmware upgrade. Um, the first, of course, is your drone itself. You'll also need a readily charged battery inside it. As you see, I've put it in already. Um, because you'll need, definitely need to connect your um, drone to power during the receiver or RX upgrade. The second is your transmitter and make sure you've got freshly charged batteries in here as well. And the third or the last, the, uh, the fourth and fifth things that you need um, are also really important. Number one, you should have gotten a mini USB, I like to call it the Android mid style mini USB, that you got with your drone. Um, now, I've got a white one here, the one you should have received is black with a hard plastic wrapping around the plug, but any mini USB will work if you somehow, for example, lost the Android style mini that you got um, with the drone package. The second, um, you, have, you shouldn't have gotten with the package, if you did, I congratulate you, that's like gold under a rainbow, um, nearly impossible, but this is one that we call the micro USB. I like to call it the uh, type B to A uh, micro. This you can easily get on Amazon for like one dollar, two dollars. Um, it's really cheap. Or you can, if you are one of those old Sony Walkman users, um, the old Sony Walkmans use this as a charging cord. Okay. So um, to let you to let you know what these cords are for. The Android Mini, or the just the Mini USB, which is the white line here, is used to upgrade your flight control protocol. And um, the Micro USB, which is the black line here, you will use to upgrade your RX or receiver, as well as your remote control slash RC slash transmitter. Um, for the latter two, for the receiver and the transmitter, you'll need this line and your transmitter, but we'll get to that in a moment. Alrighty, so now that all introductions have been done, I'm going to show you how to upgrade all three parts of your drone and transmitter. So come on over. Let's get my water bottle out of the way. Okay, first things first. I'm going to warn you about a little thing that most some people fall for. Um, during the upgrade process, you will be asked to um, select a firmware upgrade file or a firmware version file from your computer and some people that confuses some people because they put their downloads somewhere where it is very very hard to find well I'm gonna make it real simple for you put it on your desktop it's one of the easiest places to put um, your firmware files if you don't like the desktop fine but make sure you put your firmware or you download your firmware and put it in a place where you can easily locate it whether that be the desktop or the documents um, the documents set under your search engine okay but make sure wherever you get your firmware download it and put it somewhere you can easily find it it'll make life a lot easier for you trust me okay so now that I said that, let's get started. First part of the firmware upgrade, as I noted before, is FC or flight control. For that, you will need your drone as well as the mini USB. Okay? So this might sound really obvious, but you're going to want to plug the USB part of it into any COM port on your handy dandy computer. And then this part is a little trickier. You see that little, um, that little socket there for the mini USB? You're going to want to plug the, US, the mini USB part of it into there. It can get a little hard, but as soon as you get the hang of it, it's actually not too bad. This, there we go. And you heard the computer response to that. Um, 
So yeah, once you got it plugged up, go ahead, access your firmware file. In this case, I'm using the um, the Superflyer file I have here. So I'm gonna double click and enter. Now, as you notice, I've separated the firmware into the three nice and easy to access files for you. Um, and this is for any sort of firmware upgrade. It does not matter. Don't look at the firmware versions first, okay? First, look to see that the file you are choosing corresponds with the part of firmware that you are trying to upgrade. In this case, I'm trying to do FC or flight control. So I'm looking at the files here or the folders here and I locate the folder that has FC on it. Already? So we're going to double click and enter that folder. And when you enter that folder, you should see the Hubson FC or flight control upgrade tool. It's, um, you can get one that says version 1, version 2, or version 3. Any one of those will work. And you will also see the um, firmware file here. Don't touch that yet. We're first going to go to the upgrade tool to um, access the upgrade. Then you double click on the FC upgrade tool version 2. Now to have a window pop up. Okay. So um, notice there are, there, 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 it's actually a very simple interface. Um, just in case you get this in Chinese, use this video alongside the, um, your upgrade tool because it's the same thing, just different languages, okay? First things first, the first thing you're gonna want to um, make sure of when you're upgrading or beginning the upgrade is that here, on the lower left hand corner, it says connected. If it says not connect, haha, ha, bad English grammar, I know, give us a break. Um, then you're gonna wanna wait for it to say connected or if you've been waiting for a long time already, just shut down the tool and replug your drone into, uh, into another COM port, I think. Um, but in any case, if it says connected, like it says over here, then we're gonna go directly over here to the long bar that says open file and click on it. This is when I say that keeping things in an easy to locate place is a very nice thing to do because now you're going to have to locate the actual firmware file slash version that you want to upgrade to. In this case, it's already open for us. It says FC version 1.1.21. It might um, vary based on your firmware version, but the important thing is, is that you see FC here. So um, we're going to double click on that and it should show up here. Okay. Once it does, we're going to click upgrade. Easy, right? Now just wait for it to reach 100. When it does, this will momentarily disconnect. Don't worry about that, that's very normal. So we're gonna do it in five, four, three. Ah, faster than I thought. Okay, now watch it says not connect and it'll pop to connected again. Once it does, click on show version. And now it should, it should read, this part should read the exact version you just upgraded to. If it doesn't, then that means the firmware upgrade was not successful and you just restart it. In other words, unplug the drone from the computer and um, restart the tool over again, like we did at the beginning of the video, okay? So um, now that it says version 1.1.21, our version in this case, that means the firmware upgrade for the flight control or FC was successful. Now, let's move on to the RX or receiver. Okay, I'm gonna shut down this tool, unplug the Android. <clears throat> okay, so the receiver part or the RX part of the upgrade is a little more finicky than the transmitter or the flight control part. Um, as I said before, you're gonna need to change US USB lines. Now you want the micro USB here. Um, first, you're going to use the micro or USB to connect the transmitter to the computer, okay? So first, I'm going to plug this into a COM port again. And if you notice, um, for those of you standard transmitter users out there, the majority of you guys, the plug, the micro USB plug will be located here, okay? So all you have to do is pop that in. Um, for FPV1 or advanced transmitter users, there will be another part. Um, it'll be located on the part of the transmitter for you guys, but it'll be the same line. So just look around the sides for your micro USB socket, and if you find it, just plug it in and the protocol is pretty much the same. Alrighty? Um, so let's go back to the main file and take a look here, okay? So now I'm going to tell you this. Before we start the upgrade, 
For any firmware version that you have for any file that's named anything, make sure that you're looking at the firmware file that says Rx. Okay, disregard the firmware version number for now. Just look and make sure that you're selecting Rx. Alrighty, so um, I'm just going to enter the Rx file uh, first here, and then we're going to leave that alone. Okay, so zoom out for, for me, Kevin, please. Um, so pay close attention to what I'm about to do here. This part can get a little tricky, um, but it's actually very simple. You see we have a video button here as well as your aileron stick or your right stick, I'm going to call it. Um, you're going to want to hold down the video key or in the case of um, advanced transmitters, you hold down the enter key. But for standard transmitters, standard transmitters hold down the video key as well as the right stick to its bottom left corner at the same time. So it should look like this. Watch. So when while you're holding this down, you're going to want to switch on the transmitter. Okay, so I did that correctly. In this case, you should see the screen pop up and say upgrade RX mode V2. That means that you did it correctly. If you didn't do it correctly, it'll just pop to normal operating screen. Don't worry about that. Just switch the transmitter off and um, Try what I just did again, maybe hold the stick and the video key or the enter key in the case of advanced transmitter users for a little longer after you have switched on your transmitter, okay? So once you've done that, you're ready to begin the upgrade process. Um, notice that after I open the RX folder, there is another upgrade tool V2 here. This particular upgrade tool is only applicable for receiver slash RX or RC slash remote control or transmitter, okay? Um, notice that during the, the flight control upgrade or the FC upgrade, there was an FC upgrade tool. Please don't mistake that for this upgrade tool because that one is only for flight control um, and this one is only for receiver and transmitter, okay? So let's double click and enter. And as you can tell, of course, the screen selections are very different. There are three steps, fairly simple. Um, first, since we have already connected the transmitter and initiated the upgrade mode on the transmitter, we can click connect here on the first step. And now it'll say found upgrade tool connected on COM whatever. Um, as long as it says found upgrade tool, you're set already. So second part, and this is very important, you have to go in this order. Can you zoom in on the screen for me here, please? Okay, notice that the screen has changed to say upgrade RX mode, power on RX. Um, and this is when you're going to have to plug your drone to its battery. And you have to do this next. You must, must, must do this next or else it will be a failure. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to plug the battery with the drone. And you're going to notice that the LEDs don't flash. This is a good sign. This is correct. And in a moment, you're going to hear the, there we go. Once you hear that, the screen should have changed to upgrade RX mode, select file down. So now that we've done that, we can finally go to the second step and click open file. And again, this is when I say this is a good example of what I mean by it's really good to have your um, firmware somewhere easily locatable because now, as you can tell, this is the remote control file, not the RX file. Since we're upgrading for RX, let us go to the Superflyer file again and find RX. This is very important, by the way. Very, very, very important. Click on the RX folder. And now you can double click on the RX um, version file. Double check that this is true or else, um, and do not mix it up with any of the other firmware versions. Okay, so now that that's good, we can click upgrade. Alrighty. Now you watch as the blue bars fill them up. Once it reaches the end, you'll be done with the firmware upgrade process for the receiver or RX. Okay, so now it says upgrade success. And also note that on the transmitter screen, it should also say upgrade finish. If both reflect, each, uh, if both reflect that the upgrade was a success, then congratulations, you finished the upgrade successfully. Ha ha! Okay, that's good. Because now we've completed the gnarliest part of the upgrade process. You switch the transmitter off and disconnect the drone from its battery, okay? So the last part of the upgrade process is actually very easy. It's for the transmitter. And for this, you won't need the drone, just your transmitter. And you don't even have to disconnect the transmitter from the um, computer. You, don't, you also don't need to shut down the upgrade tool, but for the sake of um, 
For the sake of a more clear procedure here, that's what I will do because the extra script will confuse people. So I'm gonna shut down the upgrade tool and um, go back to the main file. So come on over here. We're gonna click on note that I will always choose RC for the transmitter upgrade, okay? So I'm gonna double click on RC and um, go ahead and open up the upgrade tool, okay? So I'm going to come on over here and zoom in on the transmitter for me, please. Um, in order to start the upgrade mode for the transmitter, it's slightly different from the receiver. It's similar, but slightly different. Um, this time I'm gonna hold down the video key, or again, in the case of advanced transmitter users, the enter key, and pull the right stick to the bottom right-hand corner at the same time. So it should look like this like that, okay? And so once you've done that, then you can switch on the transmitter and notice how I'm holding it down. Okay, so this means I've done it correctly. The screen should be completely black, okay? And the LED, the LED should be flashing on and off red. If it's doing this, then you, you've done it correctly. And now that means I can finally click connect on the first step. And so once again, it has found the upgrade tool connected on COM, whatever. Again, make sure that it just says found on upgrade tool connected. Once you've done that, then we can click open file. And now notice here I'm on the RX file. That is incorrect for the transmitter upgrade. So I'm gonna have to go back to the main Superflyer file and click on the RC folder, okay? Then making sure that this is for the FPV2. In this case, we're, we're, this is standard transmitter, transmitter software. We've got the standard transmitter here that corresponds. So we can double click on this here and enter the file. Now that we have done so, we check that this is an RC upgrade file. And since it is, we can finally click upgrade. Alrighty and watch how it fills up and notice that it's flashing on and off with the and then when it does green when it shows green and it says upgrade success here on the tool congratulations you have upgraded your transmitter correctly okay so now i'm going to disconnect so if you have completed to this point, congratulations, you've completed the computer part of the upgrade process. However, there are two more steps you have to undertake, have to undertake, I repeat, in order to get your drone flying properly after the upgrade process. The first step, we also call um, a transmitter stick calibration. Now, I know there are several people here um, who are watching this video who might fly in mode one, or like the majority of the, um, say the Western or the American world in particular flies in mode two, also known as the American hand. I'm gonna show both um, upgrade protocols for both modes, but first, since the majority of our flyers do fly in mode two, I'm gonna do mode two first, okay? So come on over here. I'll stand up so it's easy for you. Um, so mode two, uh, transmitter stick calibration protocol. First, you're going to point both sticks to the upper left-hand corner and hold them there. Oops, it's slipping. Okay, and then you're going to switch on the transmitter. There we go. You notice how the um, LED is flashing, alternate, alternating flashes between red and green, and it says calibrate stick mode 2, which means you've done it correctly. So, um... If it just pops to regular operating screen, you didn't do it properly, but that's okay. Just shut off the transmitter and try this again. Maybe hold the sticks a little longer after you switch on the transmitter, okay? So after it says this, please follow this part very, very closely or else you might encounter a very commonly met with error. Um, first, take both sticks and point them up. Notice I touched the edge of the socket. Down, in, out, and again, up, down, in, out. And I'm also gonna roll them twice for a good measure. And then I'm gonna hold any trim until it beeps, okay? So notice that since I did it properly, all the markers are moving full range, yes? Which is good. Um, if you didn't do it properly, however, you'll find that the center markers, number one, won't move at all, or maybe they'll move part of the way like that, but then if you push it the other way, it won't move at all which tells you that you're gonna have to do the upgrade process again. And I'll show you that error in a bit. Um, but since you've done it, if you've done it properly, then all of the markers should work and you should return to the home screen here. 
Okay, so first I'm going to take care of the mode the mode one people um, before I point out the error to you. Okay, so mode one people are going to take their sticks and point them outwards and up, or yeah, outwards and up, <laughs> like that. You're going to hold them there and switch on the transmitter again, like that. And oops, I did it incorrectly, so let me do that again. There we go. So now notice it says calibrate stick mode one. So congratulations, done it properly. Going to follow the same protocol. Alrighty, and I'm going to check it to make sure that I did it properly. Yes, I did. Okay, so let me show you an example in which you haven't done it properly. Let me use mode two as an example. So maybe I only just did that, or I didn't do, do anything at all, and I long press any trim. Look at what happens to the center markers. Now, as you can tell, this one's not exactly working very properly. This one kind of works, but you see I'm pointing it up, and it's going in an erratic direction that way, and I do that. And if I point this down, sometimes that moves as well. So that that causes basically the transmitter to read stick movements erroneously or not at all. And that will sometimes cause you to be unable to arm or disarm your tra your drone or like not be able to move the drone at all or even access the main menu. So what that would mean is I simply turn it off and perform the calibration again properly. Now that I've done it properly, you can tell it's moving well. Yes? So yeah, um, make sure to do that properly because if you don't, you can have some really frustrating but very easily solved issues, okay? So after I've done that, I'm going to rebind the drone to its transmitter. And this always has to be done, by the way, especially, um, especially if you've done a transmitter calibration or an upgrade. Either way, you're gonna need to do it. Um, so this is how you rebind your drone to your transmitter. Um, for the folks who own FPV1 transmitters, I believe you have to hold down your enter key in order to do this. But what I, no, you're gonna have to hold down enter key. Yes, you're gonna have to hold down your enter key in order to do this. But since I have a standard transmitter, all I have to do is hold down my photo, not video, my photo key and switch on the transmitter. And it should say system initialize, bind to plane. Always do the transmitter first, okay? Because there's a limited amount of time after you plug your drone into its battery to rebind. And I'll show you how you can tell. And if in that case, it's very, very, very um, quick. Also, make sure that your drone is very, very close to the transmitter. You notice just how close I've put it. Um, and you should, and you can see the telemetry is kind of missing at first, but as long as I move the drone a little bit, it'll start showing up already. Um, let me show you what I mean by you have a very, very, very short amount of time to, um, you have a very short amount of time after you turn on the drone to rebind um, or to bind in the first place, and I'll show you why, um, how you can tell. So I'm going to connect the drone to its, to, to its battery. You see the front two LEDs alternating, uh, it's flashing. Basically when it does that, it's searching for the transmitter. Um, however, it only gives you about three to five seconds before it stops searching for the transmitter and gives up and basically goes to normal operating mode with the calibrate compass and whatnot. If after you've, um, say, try to rebind your drone and the drone has already gone to calibrate compass but the screen is still black like that then that just means try again and perhaps move your drone closer to your transmitter like it's probably best that you do that or some people do this or you can like put it here but i like this because the 2.4 antenna is located right here um basically do that and your binding should be successful 
and also make sure that you start up the transmitter first because that gives you more time um, for the drone to bind. That's another tip, by the way. Um, so yeah, after you've successfully rebound your drone, you should be all set to fly. Um, again, if you like to try, check for motor problems, not that you should have motor problems after a firmware upgrade, that'd be a little scary, but if you like to try, um, test for motor problems, just run the engines without the propellers, and if there are no weird sounds, you should be fine. Um, if you made it all the way to this part, congratulations! You've made it through the process, the long, arduous journey of upgrading your transmitter and flight control and receiver, but not necessarily in that order. Ha! <laughs> So once again, um, this has been Annie from the LA North American Hub Zone office. We're here for technical support. Um, call us anytime at 909 if you would like help, and we'll do our best to help you. Case.